That's some heat coming off there, buddy. I think it's on. Yeah. All right, take your Bible now and turn to the book of 2 Peter. The book of 2 Peter, chapter number 1. The book of 2 Peter, chapter number 1 this morning. And I want to look at some scripture, I believe, that um, will help us this morning. And I'm going to talk about um, going somewhere. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's running. But y'all are heating it up. All right. Second Peter, chapter number one. And the thought I want you to think about this morning is, if you're going somewhere, you're going to make plans on when, where, and how to get there. How many of y'all in here, you want to go to heaven when you die? Raise your hand. Everybody does. I mean, good night. Everybody wants to go to heaven. Now, if you're going to heaven when you die, you're going to have to make some plans and arrangements. Look at 2 Peter chapter number 1 and verse 10. Wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure, for if you do these things, ye shall never fall. Now, I dealt with that in Sunday school, if you were not here, um, about how to, what happens when doubting your salvation. A lot of people go through life wondering whether or really not, am I really saved? Am I really saved? And you don't want to die like that, or you don't want to face death like that. People are doing it right now. Thousands of people are dying right now just while I've been up here talking. And uh, they, many of them, they all want to go to heaven, but a lot of people don't plan. So I guess the title uh, was, the message would be, how are you going to get to heaven? How are you going to get to heaven? Now, if, if you're going to leave here this morning and say, I'm going to Charlotte, then you, the first thing that would hit your mind is, where is Charlotte? How far is Charlotte? And how am I going to get to Charlotte? Right? Normal. I have... I got a car sitting right out there this, this, this morning. And my plan this afternoon sometime is to go back to Nebo. I'm, my plan in my head is I'm going to get in that car and I've made sure it's got gas in it. I've made sure the tires ain't flat. I've made sure the, the, the motor has oil in it. And I, I've made my, that's how I am going to get to Nebo. You'd be surprised people go through life all their life. So you're going to heaven. Yeah, I'm going to heaven. Hey, hey well, and, and hadn't made plans on how they're going to get there. What, what's going to take you to heaven? I'm asking everybody in here, what's going to take you to heaven when you die? I mean, how you going, how you going to get there? How are you going to get there? Um, if you're going on a trip, you make plans. You make reservations. You call ahead. If you're going on vacation, you'll maybe a lot of times people call ahead at a motel, make reservations. I sent them in early. I know where I'm going. I know where I'm staying. When I get there, I know how I'm going to get there. My means of transportation have, have been determined. If you're going out to California or somewhere, I've got a, 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 plan, a ticket on an airplane uh, down to Charlotte. I'm going to Charlotte. The airplane's going to take me to Texas or it's going to take me to California. It's going to take me to Washington or Oregon State or wherever you're going. And that's my plan on how to get there. Now, everybody in here just said a minute ago, you want to go to heaven when you die. My question is, what, what's going to take you there? Well, you, you, know, you ain't just going to die one day, wake up in heaven, that's it. Uh, the Bible said there's a hell. So there's, there's two places people go when they die. Everybody's not going to heaven. I wish they were, but everybody's not, according to the Bible. I didn't write this. Remember that. Don't blame me for what this says. I, I, I believe it and I preach it. I didn't write it. And... We're going to have to think about getting there. And the most, the most terrible tragedy I can imagine in life would be to live your life, all your life, thinking, well, I'm a good person. I, I, I love Jesus. I, da, 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 da. You then wake up and not wind up in heaven. That'd be awful. That'd be awful. And that happens. So my question is, how are you going to get there? I've talked to people, thousands of them, literally thousands, from all walks of life. From educated to uneducated, big, little, poor, smart, old, young, uh, foreign, home. And I have people tell me these things. And I say, um, are you you going to heaven when you die? And the first thing they'll say is, I'm a member 
of such and such a church. A lot of people. Now, I know you hear it preached all the time, and you think that's silly, many of you. You'd be surprised at the people. You'd be surprised. If you don't believe it, get you a handful of tracks and canvas. Go out one day and talk to 100 people. And you'd be surprised that the people say, Preacher, I know I'm, I'm going to heaven. I've been a Baptist all my life. Or I've been a, I was raised a Methodist or a Catholic or a Presbyterian. Or I've been, my, my mom took me to Pentecostal church since I was little. And somehow or another they think, because my name is on a church roll somewhere, that, uh, that I'm going to heaven when I die. And they think, that's what's going to get me there. In the back of their mind, that's what's going to get me to heaven is, is I'm going to belong to a church. Matter of fact, I know people way up in the mountains that think, uh, uh, and, and they'll come and say, guess what? So-and-so joined the church. Well, and that's great. I mean, that's, I'm glad to hear that. But they say it, and it sounds like they're saying, because they joined the church, that's going to take them to heaven. Like saying that car is going to take me to Nebo, that joining that church is going to take them to heaven when they die. I'm going to tell you something, people. Uh, that, yeah, yeah, that's not Blowing the church ain't going to take you very far. It ain't going to take you nowhere after you die. After you die, belonging to a church. I mean, just because you go to church don't make you a Christian. Just because you sit in a garage don't make you a car. Uh, just because you sit in a bakery don't make you a donut. You look like one pretty soon, but you just because you sit in church does not make you a Christian. You say, I, you can go to church every Sunday and still not go to heaven when you die. That's right. I, I know that sounds elementary to a lot of you people, but bear with me. There's people in here that ain't got to elementary yet. Uh, they're, they're in preschool spiritually. And so you you got to understand that uh, just just going to church. There's a man in the Bible, and G G Jesus was here. All his disciples was here, and there's a man right with him everywhere he went. His name was Judas Iscariot, and Judas was there when the dead were raised. Judas was there when the the power came down. Judas was there when the, the they went out and worked miracles. Judas was there when Jesus fed five thousand. Judas was there when uh, Lazarus come up. Judas was there. He was right there with them every service, and he died, and he did not go to heaven. You, I think you ought to go to church. I think everybody ought to go to church. Everybody ought to go to church. Every chance you get. But the church is not the vehicle that's going to take you to heaven when you die. You've got to have more than just going to church. I, I plan to go down to Moxville and preach. You know what I got to do? I got to figure out. You used to get your map, you know. I still got a map. But you GPS sitters, I don't know. Where is Moxville? Uh, where is it at? How am I going to get there? You go down that road right there and go down to Statesville. Go down 64. There's three or four ways you can go there. Then out uh, uh, down south of between Statesville and Winston-Salem. It's down in there. That, that way a little bit. And uh, I've, I've got it in my head where it's at. i got it in my head how to get there, that car. And i got it in my head uh, how, how I'm going to make it. See, you understand what I'm saying? Look, people, if you're going to heaven, you better have a plan on what's going to take you there and how you're going to get there when you die. You've got to have a plan. Uh, and, and your church been on the church. Now I've talked to people said this. man told me one time, lots of times, are you going to heaven when you die? And a man said, preacher, I'm doing the best I can. You ever heard anybody say that? I'm doing the best I can. And somehow or another, they think that's the vehicle that's going to take him on that trip. I'm doing the best I can. I'm doing the best I can. Now, what they mean is, uh, I'm trying to be moral and do right and blah, 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 blah. And, and, and I'm, I'm, I've got it in the back of my head. I, I want to go there. I want to go there someday. I, I want to do right. I want to I wanna go to heaven. I want to, but they think, they, th they got this idea that when God looks down at you and he sees you trying, that that's the vehicle that's going to take you to heaven. That's what they think. Millions of them. Millions of people today think, I'm doing the best I can, so God ought to be happy with that. And he knows I'm trying, so I think that'll get me in. I can't imagine him putting me in hell me doing the best I can. And I asked a man one time, they said, uh, hey, are you going to heaven? He said, uh, well, I hope I am. I said, I'm doing the best I can. And he said, I said, have you been saved? Have you trusted Jesus to be your Savior? No. And the guy said, well, you're not doing the best you can. Best thing you can do is get saved. If you ain't doing that, you're not doing the best you can. 
You're just claiming you are. And then there's others that would say this. I know people personally. Some of my relatives, ex relatives that I used to have, they're dead and gone now, that belong to a civic club or an organization, and honest to goodness, in their mind, they think I'm in one of these do-gooder clubs or a, or a, or a I don't know, some kind of fraternity or a, a lodge or, or a club or something, and surely, of all the good we do, like, like the Shriners and like the Masonic Lodge and something, and they have these different where they uh, take money and they help little kids that's been burned, you know, and they're burning in the hospital and they pay their hospital bills and stuff. You'd be surprised people like that who think, surely I'm going to heaven when I, they're thinking that because they do good things like that. And I'm going to tell you something this morning, brother. We may have those in here this morning, probably do. I've had people get mad at me a lot of times before. Uh, it won't be the first time. Uh, but if a preacher don't make somebody upset, he ain't doing much preaching. Uh, but uh, uh, the Masonic Lodge ain't going to take you to heaven. As a matter of fact, the Masonic Lodge is a hindrance to you going to heaven. As a matter of fact, you don't even supposed to belong to something where you're supposed to take promises that you'll keep secrets. And all God's people said, Amen. I know where we're living. I know we're in the mountain. I know these preachers all over this country that are Masons and they'll argue with you. I had a man get mad at me one time. He stomped out the door. He said he has no right. Let me, let me tell you something this morning, brother. Jesus did not die for the moose. Jesus did not die for the elks. I don't know why they call them animals or the possum, skunks. All. He didn't die for, for the Masons. He didn't die for the Masonic Lodge. Jesus did not die for the Lodge. Jesus did not die for the club. Jesus died for the church. He's coming back after the church. And you can do all the good deeds you want to do. Paul said, I can give my body to be burned. I give everything I've got. And there are people that do that. They think, well, I do a lot of good to help in that community. And I help this cause and that cause. And I give money here. And I do this and that. No, that is not a vehicle that will take you to heaven. That'll, that's, not, that's not civic club won't do it. Amen. A civic club won't do it. You can belong to every club in the town and still not go to heaven when you die. That vehicle won't get you there. That thing won't get you there. That's right. That's right. Well, what, what? I had an uncle one time. They're all dead and gone now. I don't mean anything bad with them. But, uh, and they lived in California. And when I preached in California a couple of times, my aunt would say, Danny, don't you come stay with us? And I is in uh, Long Beach, which is right on the other side of Los Angeles. And, and I'd go and I'd say, uh, are y'all going to church? And she'd say, no, uh, but my husband, he's, in the, he's very active in the lodge. She said he's very active. They have lodge meetings on Tuesday night. They have lodge meetings on Saturday. And the men in the lodge, they all get together and they help the widows and, and stuff like that. And it began to dawn on me that they were substituting that work in that lodge for what we would do as Christians. And in their mind, they were thinking, we don't really need to go to church. God's going to take us to heaven. We're in the lodge. We're doing something for other people. We're trying to help people. We're going to help people, and we're all going to wind up in heaven. And I'm thinking, whoa here, whoa, 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 right there. That 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 vehicle won't get you there. That thing, that thing's out of gas. That thing has no 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 license to be on the highway. That vehicle will not get you. And and I remember, I remember telling him, I said, y'all need to go to church. And she would always say, my husband is active in the lodge they finally got sick and died with cancer I don't know if he ever got saved or not I hope he did I tried to talk to him I tried to tell him but in their mind they started thinking listen people you can't pray in the name of Jesus Christ in the lodge anything that you can't pray in the name of Jesus Christ in ain't going to take you to heaven I can tell you that Amen. Amen. I know people resent that. People say, oh, you preachers, you just ran out. I'm telling you what that book says. My calling is to tell you what the book says. And the Bible said Jesus died for the church. Jesus died for the church. You know how you get in a church? You must be born again. You got to get in here. That's your ticket. And that's the vehicle that's going to take you to, oh, here you go again. I, I don't have to go to church. Go to heaven. I didn't say you did. But I said Jesus died for the church collectively and he's coming back after people that are born again collectively and that is the vehicle that will take you to heaven. Not a local body but the church on earth and the lodge ain't part of the church and all God's people say it. That's right. That's right. Not only that. Some people say 
I heard a bunch of people. Preacher, I'm doing my best to live by the commandments. And people think that God gave you a list, Ten Commandments. You keep all these Ten Commandments, you'll go to heaven when you die. Now, there's two things wrong with that. First thing wrong with that is, the Lord never said that. The Lord never said, if you kept all the Ten Commandments, you'd go to heaven. You listen to me? There's nowhere in the Bible where God said to a Christian in the New Testament, if you keep all Ten Commandments, you'll go to heaven when you die. That's the first thing wrong with that. The second thing wrong with it, you ain't keeping them no way. And if you could, you still wouldn't go to heaven. I'm not going to heaven because I keep the Ten Commandments. You say, Brother Danny, how are you going to get to Moxville? I'm keeping the Ten Commandments. Uh Uh-uh. You understand? I know I'm talking. I'm not, I don't usually preach like this. I'm trying to help somebody who can't get this figured out in your head. Maybe you're new here. Maybe that's who I'm aiming at this morning. Listen, y'all. That if, if you said, Danny, you're going to Moxville. We got the next. Yes, I sure am. How are you going to get there? I'm going to keep the Ten Commandments. Well, you say, well, that's ridiculous. you got to do more than that. That's right. That's right. I've got a vehicle that's going to take me there. Now, you say, how are you going to heaven, Brother Danny? It ain't by keeping the commandments. I've got somebody that's going to take me. Do you understand that? Do you understand what I'm saying? Um, and, and you ain't keeping them no way. I mean, you know, God, uh, you know, people talk about how great it is to be in the New Testament. And, and uh, hey man, God was mean in the Old Testament and Jesus lighting up on us. Not really. The truth is, Jesus made it worse. He said... Uh, Thou hast, as has been said, uh, thou shalt not do this. But I say unto you, son, he magnified it. He made it even harder. Uh, One of the Ten Commandments is not to bear false witness. That means tell a lie. Uh, He said, I've never told a lie. You just told another right there when you say that. Now, the truth is, everybody in here, more than that high, has told a lie. Everybody in here is told, you mean tell me, you said not me, you mean tell me when you was in school or you're at work and you're fooling around cutting up and somebody says, here comes the boss man and then you started working real quick. You've never done that? You know, that, you know what that is? That's a, you're deceiving that person. You're trying to get him to think that you was working when you really wasn't. You know what we call that? <whistles> Don't bow your head yet. We ain't praying. I'm just getting in off out of the hangar. I ain't took off yet. I'm just in the introduction. I'm just kidding. Uh, but uh, listen, y'all, you have told a lie. That's enough to do, do you in right there. That's enough. Uh, the Bible said thou shalt not covet. Yeah, the Bible said thou shalt have no other gods before me. You mean tell me you ain't never loved something more than you love God? Absolutely you have. I have. We all have. Amen. You can't keep no Ten Commandments. You say, well, Brother Danny, uh, I... He said, I've never committed adultery. Uh -uh, uh -uh, uh Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Jesus said, a man looked at a woman and lust at her, committed adultery in his heart. Mm. Guilty! Guilty! We're all guilty! How about murder? Oh, I got you there, preacher. I ain't never killed nobody. Uh Uh-oh. New Testament said, he that hates his brother is a murderer. You ever hate anybody? Well, I don't hate nobody. Well, you know, I can't say that. I, as far as I know, I don't hate nobody. But I have hated people before. Man, I didn't like this guy one time. <laughs> Put it mildly. He'd done me really bad. And I dreamed I had him down and I was beating him up. And I was getting the biggest blessing ever while I was beating him up. <laughs> and I woke up and said, oh, my goodness, this ain't real. This ain't true. And I thought, that ain't right. That ain't right. And I finally forgive. Got it all under the blood and all, all that kind of stuff. But you know, you have hate in your heart towards somebody. You're a murderer. So, so far in here this morning, we have murderers, adulterers, and thieves, and liars. Whew. Rough bunch. How you gonna, that ain't going to take you to heaven. That ain't going to take you. Keeping the Ten Commandments will not do it. Keeping the Ten Commandments will not do it. How are you going to get there? How are you going to get there? Well, let me say this. Trust in your good works. People say, I'm doing the best I can. I'm doing all I can. The Bible said, not of works, not according to our works, but according to His mercy, He saved us. 
Nothing else will do for you what a, what a dying man needs. Nothing else, nothing else, nothing else, nothing else, nothing else. Listen, people, you can try as hard as you can, and you should. You can live right the best you can, and you should. But when it all comes down to the nitty-gritty, and we all hit rock bottom, and we're facing eternity, I'll never forget what I heard a preacher, read a preacher said one time. He said, when it comes time for me to die, he said, I was laying on that bed, and he'd preach 50 years, and he said, Lord, take all the good works I've ever done and throw them overboard. He said, Lord, take all the bad works I've ever done and throw them overboard. And Lord, just remember the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now that's the vehicle that's going to take you to heaven when you die. Not being good, not doing the Ten Commandments, not going to church, not giving money, not helping people out. You should do all that stuff. But I'm telling you, when it comes right, listen, if I had to die today, if I had to die today, I hope I don't, but if I had to, I want to go to heaven, but I don't want to die before the Lord wants me to stay here and try to help you and see my kids and grandkids and everybody. But if I had to die today, I could not look up and say, well, Lord, I've been preaching since I was 19. Ain't you proud of me? Well, sir, I'd hang my head in shame because I know what a sorry dog I am. And I'd hang my head down and I'd say, God, I don't deserve one thing I've ever got. But God, remember the blood that was shed for me on the cross. And brother, I'll go in by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the vehicle that's going to take me there. Just like I'm trusting that car to take me to Moxville. I'm trusting what Jesus Christ did for me on the cross to take me to heaven. Understand that? I hope you do. The scariest thing is, and I'll say this and I'm done. The scariest thing is, people say, I say, you're going to get saved, and they say, I'm, I'm going to later. I'm going to later. Now the Bible said in 2 Corinthians 6, 2, Behold, now is accepted time. Behold, today is the day of salvation. Bible said, boast not thyself tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Nobody in here knows how long you're going to be here. Nobody knows when you're going to leave this world. Nobody knows how long you've got left. We don't, I don't, you don't. Help this person in here can be gone before the day's over. Nobody knows that. But I'm going to tell you something. This old book said, be ready. Now, I'll put you on the scale here, as I've done many times. And you're going to see yourself on this scale that I'm going to give you right now. And I'm going to illustrate. Your life. Let's just say that right here where these two chairs are is where I'm born. Born into this world. Here you are, little baby. Zero years old. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. All your life. The Bible gives us three score and ten. Seventy. Now let's just say this morning that there is this this from that chair. To that chair is your life, normal. If you up past 70, you're, you're living on God's grace, and he's give you extra time. Praise the Lord for it. If I mean four score, that would be 80. That same scripture says three score and 10, that's 70, and maybe four score if he blesses you with 10 more, 80. You go past 80, you're really doing good, and a lot of people do. Thank God for it. But most people, averages out there is what God said in the Bible, Zero to seven. Now watch this. Let's say that's one day. Here, you got up this morning. It's seven o'clock in the morning. That's zero. Now you're going to be a teenager, run, uh, go to school, get married, have kids, raise a family, go to church, get old, get sick, die. That's 11 o'clock tonight. Let's compare that to one full day, zero to 70, birth, Death, 7 a.m., 11 p.m. Now you're going to see yourself. If you're 15 years old, it's 1025. That means you was born at 7 o'clock in the morning. And if you're 15 years old this morning, it's already almost 1030, break time at work. 10, 15. We think 15, oh, you're just, you ain't even getting started yet. It's already almost break time. If you're 15, man. If you are. More than that. If, you, if you're uh, 20. It's 1134. If you're 20 years old. It's 
25 to 12. You got up at 7 o'clock in the morning, die at 11 o'clock at night. 25. If you're, if, uh, I'm sorry, if you're 25 at 12.42, it's after lunch. You done had break, lunch, and everything. If you're 25, y'all, If you're 30, it's nine minutes till two. Think about that. You got up at seven in the morning. You'll die at 11 at night. And if you're 30 years old, it's nine minutes till two in the afternoon. Any man in here can tell you that works hard says, you get a lot done from seven o'clock in the morning to two o'clock in the day. It starts getting the evening time. You're 30 years old, man. You're done about had it. And that's not counting car wreck, something unexplainable, some weird accident, something like that. No, if you're 35, it's what? Somebody tell me. What's halfway? First shift's over. Can anybody tell me what's halfway between 7 and 11? 3 o'clock. It's 3 o'clock, first shift done. If you're 35, if you're 35 years old in here this morning, you're, you're about, you're pitiful. You're old. <laughs> Just kidding. you're over the hill, man. You're an old woman. You're an old man. I'm just kidding with you. But think about it. It's three o'clock in the daytime, people. You got up at seven. You're gonna die at night. If you're 35, it's three o'clock in the evening. To me, now 35 seems like Lord, they ain't grown yet. But it's three o'clock. Don't feel bad. I'm done dead. <laughs> if you if you're 40, it's 408. If you're 40 years old, it's 8 minutes after 4. If you're 45, it's 5, 16, supper time. If you're 45, it's supper time. You better get on the ball, buddy. If you're 50, it's 25 minutes after 6. If you're 55, it's 734, 25 minutes to 8. The long day is about done. If you're 60, it's 842. If you're 65, it's nine minutes till 10. It's about over 72. Don't say, I'm going to wait, I'm going to wait, I'm going to wait, I'm going to wait. You better nail this thing down. You better get it fixed. You better get it fixed. I read about a man by the name of Howard Gagel. And he lived out in the Midwest many, many years ago. Back around the turn of the last century, in the early 1900s. And he was 12 years old and learned how to get drunk. His daddy was drunk and they stayed drunk all the time and he got in trouble and he got in all kinds of problems and he followed his daddy's footsteps and he was mean as the devil. And he got in, run off with a gang of boys and, and he got, they all partied all the time. They shot people, they got into the mafia and all kinds of big uh, wicked outfits like that. And he, I mean, he, he, he got into one mess, another mess, another mess, another mess. And before he left home, his mama read the Bible all the time and prayed. And, and she told him, she said, now, honey, uh, she said, I'm going to tell you something before you leave. She said, Howard, she said, I'm going to be on my knees praying for you every night at 8 o'clock. I'm going to be down praying for you. He said, oh, mom, that's crazy. Leave me alone. And he ran out the door and he went into the big city and went wild as a buck and stayed drunk and partied and, and, and shot and killed people and robbed stores and no, no telling what. And he lived wicked. And one night he's in a bar. He said to his bar and his fight broke out and he pulled a gun on a man that was going, going to shoot this guy. And he said right when he's getting ready to shoot him, something knocked the gun out of his hand that fell on the floor. And he said he shocked it like that and he looked around and said, what in the world was that? And he just looked up and the clock said, ding, 8 o'clock. And he said it hit him like a rock. He said, my mama's home praying for me. Mama's home praying for me. And he grabbed that gun and walked out of that place. And in his mind, he's thinking, I could have been going my way to prison right now. I could be in jail for murder. Mama praying for me. This time. And he kept drinking. Kept drinking. Didn't change him a bit. Kept on and on and on and on and on. Living like a devil. Doing whatever he wanted to do. Living like a party and sin. And then finally one day, he got sick. And the doctor said, you got six months to live now. 
And his body was broken. He couldn't party no more. And he stumbled back home. And he walked in. He could barely walk. And he was dying with cancer or something. And he looked down. And he found his old mom. And he said, Mom. He said, Mom, is there any hope? He said, Mom, is there any hope? He said, I've lived like a devil. She said, Yes, son, there's hope. Let's pray. And he said, Mama, I don't know if God can save me or not. I've been wicked all these years. She said, Yes, son, there's hope. And he got down. He got saved. He got right with God. He got his transportation lined up go to heaven. And that boy got saved and got called to preach. And he made a lot of money before he preached. He wound up giving 75% of his income. That's how much money he made. He was able to give 75% of his income to the Lord missionaries. He helped Gypsy Smith, the great evangelist and helped him in his crusade and stuff. Thousands thousand people probably got saved because of that guy. And he became a preacher himself. Do you know what he had to do? He had to get his business right. And he said, I'm getting ready to die. I want to go to heaven. How am I going to get there? And he got on board the old ship of Zion. Just like I did. Just like you did. Many, many years ago, I got on board. And one of these days, I'm trusting that old ship to dock safely on the other shore. And let us out where we'll be over in the glory land shouting forever. That's how I'm planning on getting there. You take anything else, you'll wreck before you get out up past the first cloud. What are you going to do to get to heaven? Let's stand together with heads bowed. Everyone standing, every head bowed, every eye closed. Nobody's talking, nobody's moving, please. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Please, bow your head, please. Nobody's talking in reverence to God. Coming to play something softly on the piano, Miss Desi. God's speaking to your heart here this morning. This would be the perfect opportunity for you to come down and settle this issue between you and God. Now, now look, I tried to make it as plain as I could make it. You would get down and say, Lord Jesus, I can't keep the Ten Commandments, but you did. And I'm trusting what you did for me on that cross many, 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 many years ago. And I'm going to trust that to get me to heaven. Would you do that today? I, I don't want to embarrass you. I'm not going to come and try to drag you to the altar or nothing like that. But I do want, want you to come. I do want you to make yourself, get yourself right with God here this morning. Maybe you're here this morning and you'd say, Preacher, I, I used to live right. and I, was, I used to serve God, but I've got away from God. And I've backslid. I need to rededicate my life this morning. I need to just get back in there where I need to be. Just get out of your seat. Come on down here. Let's pray. Sun's coming. Sun's coming. Others are coming. Just, just get out of your seat. This is the invitation right now. Ain't nothing to be ashamed of. Ain't nothing to be embarrassed over. Come on. Come on right now. Come on right now. Would you do that? Would you do that, please? Just You say, Brother Danny, I'm going to go to heaven. How are you going to get there? How are you going to get there? Come on. Come on right now. Amen. 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 Come on, ma'am. Come on, sir. Get out of your seat. Come. Let's settle this issue. Let's settle it once and for all and forever. Young lady, young man, you need to come. Amen. You ladies. Amen. Or that girl there. That's right. That's right. God may be dealing with your heart this morning. Might need some of you other ladies to pray these girls over here. Amen. 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 Listen, you... Like, I'm trusting my car to take me home. You trust Jesus Christ to get you home. That's very, very, very simple. It's called God's plan. Have you ever been saved? Deep down in your heart, do you know you're going to heaven when you die? If you don't, now's a good time to fix it. Now's a good time to fix it. But the Lord, I'm just trusting you and you only to get me to heaven. Amen. Amen. So others coming. Others coming. Others coming. Others coming. You'd be surprised people go through life don't even know if they're going to heaven when they die because they think, I'm trying to do the best I can. I'm trying to be good. Preach. And you'll never know if that's your belief. You never will know because you've never been good enough. And Lord, I've got this thing fixed. Lord, I've got it fixed. Lord, I'm putting my trust in what Jesus Christ did for me on the cross. It's fixed. I'm settled. Come on right now. Come on right now. Come on right now. Amen. Amen.
You come on now. You come on. Let's pray. We're going to pray. Come on. We're going to pray for these on the altar. If you need to come, come on. It's your chance right now, girl. Young man, big night tonight. Big night tonight. You want to be ready. Amen. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for being so good to us. Thank you for your blessings on our life. Thank you, Lord, for the good time we've had here this morning. I pray that you bless every single person here today. God, meet the need of every heart. Thank you, Lord, for people that are willing to respond, for those that come to get this thing settled in their heart. God, I pray that you bless every single person here on this altar and those that have been. I pray that you give them assurance and peace in their heart that they're going to heaven when they die. Lord, and I'm trusting you, Lord. I can't trust nothing else. Nothing else will get us there. You, the work is done. Lord, we know we're not going to heaven because of our works. We're trusting in your works and what you've done. And I'm trusting you today. Take me when I leave this old world. Take me home to be with you forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Hallelujah. Thank you for blessed assurance. Lord, you said if we call on you, you'd take us home. I pray, God, that you'd help that one this morning that's struggling with this. Do what ought to be done in every life. In Jesus' name we pray and for his sake we ask it. Amen. Some still praying now. Amen. Some still praying. I don't want to get in no hurry. Amen. 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 Uh, that's right. Most important thing in the world. Most important thing in the world. Where are you going when you leave here? All right. If you can think of anything more important than that, please tell me. Amen. Amen. Hey, please tell me if you can think of anything more important than that, and I'll preach it next Sunday. Amen. When you leave here, it's forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. You ain't coming back. You're not going to reincarnate and try it again. One shot, buddy. One shot. You blow that, you're done. Forever. All right. All hearts clear. Now look, let's make us a plan. I think some of the young people are coming back to pray at 5 o'clock this evening. Big night tonight. They are bringing some bus kids, families. You think of somebody in your mind right now. Neighbors, kids. Sisters. Kids that live down the road. Try to load them up and bring them in here tonight. We're having a big youth night tonight, 6 o'clock. It's going to be very important. Okay? We're getting cranked up for our youth rally, y'all. Uh, youth rally is April 19th, so we're getting in gear uh, uh, tonight. All right, all hearts clear. I'm going to ask Brother Joey Biddick's field dismissal and everybody fellowship before you go. Be here at 6 this evening. Brother Joey.